Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to this lecture. And here I am going to teach you some basic concepts of nuclear chemistry, which you will use in further advanced level lectures. So I will be talking about uh, the nuclear chemistry, mainly the nucleus and its structure, mass defect and nuclear binding energy. And there are different uh, radioactive decays, particularly alpha decay, negatron emission, positron emission, electron capture, gamma decay, and finally the nuclear stability. So first, uh, just have a look. Uh, on the different terms we use and, uh, and uh, they, they are the different fields of the chemistry dealing with the, the nucleus or the radioactivity and the first uh, branch is the nuclear chemistry. Actually this deals with the radioactivity, nuclear uh, processes, nuclear transformation and nuclear properties. Actually in this field we will study the nucleus of the element or the nucleides. So uh, there is another uh, branch of chemistry uh, which is the radiochemistry and this is particularly the study of the radioactive materials. And the third field is the radiation chemistry and this is about the uh, study of the chemical effects of the radiation on the matter. So uh, simply I can uh, uh, try to uh, keep you understand that what is the main difference between these three branches and if you take the just the example of the sun so uh, there are several nuclear reactions are taking place in the sun within the sun so <clears throat> this study will be the nuclear chemistry so if you want to study the whole sun, that means it is the radioactive material like a uranium. So that study will be called a radiochemistry. So, so another, so there are several nuclear reactions are taking place in the sun. So the, the radioactive or the electromagnetic rays like UV or the visible are coming from the sun. So they will interact with the metal. So they will induce some sort of the effects after the interaction with the matter. And this study is called the radiation chemistry. So it is very simple. If you take the example of the sun, you can differentiate the three branches of the chemistry dealing with different aspects of the radioactive material or radioactivity or the interaction of the radioactivity with the matter. So moving to the uh, the other topic which is the nucleus and its structure so uh, it is the symbol you can represent with the x or with uh, with the real symbol like carbon uranium or uh, neon so uh, we will be using the symbol x x representing any chemical symbols it is related to the specific element and this will be the atomic number, Z will be the atomic number, A will be the atomic mass, and you can calculate the number of neutrons and just subtracting the uh, atomic number from the mass number, you can calculate the number of neutrons. So this is a very basic uh, information about the nucleus because this will be, we will be using this one uh, to clear our concept uh, in the next slides. So another terms we will be using, uh, it is the nucleons. So nucleon, actually it is the collective term used for the protons and the neutrons, and it is the, actually the mass number. So in this nuclear chemistry, we will be using the term nucleons, and you will understand it is the, the number of protons and the neutrons, collective term used for these two. Uh, uh, and uh, simply you can say, uh, nucleons represent the atomic mass of the nucleus. So the other term we will be using nucleide instead of the element or the atom. So nucleide refers to the specific nucleus species identified by a mass 
number a any of the mass number so it is better to use the the term nucleoid instead of the element while dealing the uh, or studying the different concepts of the nucleus in the nuclear chemistry so here there are the different classification of the nucleides so these are very simple to understand let's suppose uh, what are the isotopes I isotopes if iso means same topes mean uh, protons that mean same proton or same proton mean same atomic number so if the nucleides having the same proton or the atomic number but they have the different mass number and of course the number of the neutron these are called the isotopes so examples are like hydrogen deuterium tritium in all these three isotopes of hydrogen the proton are the same that mean on one proton is there and there of course the neutron are different and due to the difference in the neutron the atomic mass is different in three isotopes so next is the isotones again very uh, easy to remember iso means same tones mean neutrons so if there are same number of neutrons the nucleate will be called the isotones so the example is like boron 12 carbon 13 both are having the seven neutrons so that's why these both are are the isotones to each other so other one is the so what is left same proton same neutrons if there is the same a that means the atomic mass if the nucleides having the same mass then they will be called the isobars so the uh, these two are the example carbon 12 and boron 12 the mass number is same 12 but the atomic number is different of course atomic number is different than the number of neutron are also different so the same atomic mass you can call them the isobars so there is another example some nuclides are the nuclear isomers isomers mean having the same a and z same atomic number and same mass number but they are different in the energy like they have the different they meeting the different gamma rays so they are the nuclear isomers to each other so this is all about the very simple information about the nucleus and the, the type of the nucleus. So moving to the, now the question is here, the importance is because the nucleus is composed of uh, uh, the, the protons and the neutrons and the, all the protons uh, or the protons are having the positive charges so there should be the repulsion between the positive charges and then we can uh, imagine or uh, uh, it, there may be a question in your mind so why the nucleus is stable instead of the the positive charges uh, uh, within the nucleus because the neutron uh, neutron uh, neutrons doesn't uh, have the charge on it so because they are the neutral in nature so the now let's uh, look at this example to answer the question so why the nucleus is stable so actually if you look at the first example this is a carbon 13 this is the isotope of the carbon and uh, it is of course the composed uh, by the uh, seven neutrons and the six proton six proton that means it is the carbon and the mass number will be the 13. so uh, let's see another example so i have uh, mentioned here the uh, helium helium having the atomic number two and mass number four so this is the mass of the helium so you can also calculate the mass by using the number of the protons and the number of the neutrons like uh, the example is shown over here so in case of the helium there are two protons and four minus two two neutrons are there so that means this is the mass of one protons this is the mass of one neutron so you are going to just to multiply 2 by each of the number of 
mass of the protons and number of mass of the neutron and total calculated mass is 4.0308 u u is the unified mass or the atomic mass unit so uh, look at the the difference so this is the actual mass and this is the the calculated mass so if you have a difference between these two masses this is the the calculated mass and this is the actual mass of the helium so mass difference is this 0.030377u and this is called the the difference is mass or it is called the mass defect so it is actually the actual mass is this is in less as compared to the calculated mass so that mean uh, is the mass is uh, is the mass is going to destroy and the answer is according to the law of conservation of mass and energy this the mass and energy cannot be destroyed so what is happening so this may be converted into the energy so you will be uh, you will use simple the einstein equation e square mc square and to convert the mass into energy and here i will be using the simple conversion unit so one u will be equal to 931.5 so simply if you multiply the unified atomic mass with this factor it will directly convert the mass into the energy in mega electron volt so this is the one u will be equal to 931.5 mega electron volt so there is no need to each time you need this equation to convert the mass into energy so there are two concept we have uh, 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 study over here one is the the mass defect that is the difference between the uh, actual uh, uh, difference between the calculated mass and the actual mass so this is called the mass defect so this mass defect we have converted into the energy and this energy is actually the uh, the binding energy so that means the mass is not lost it is converted into the energy and that energy is called the binding energy so this binding energy actually is the main uh, the uh, answer to the question which i have raised before why the protons having the positive charge are stable within the nucleus and this is the reason because the uh, due to the mass defect it in, that this much energy is released because it is having the positive sign so this is opposite to the uh, the thermochemistry uh, uh, the symbol we will be using in the thermochemistry uh if the sign here is positive that mean it is the exothermic reaction or the we call it the exothermic reaction so energy is released if the sign is positive and this will we will be using in the nuclear chemistry so that mean this energy is released and actually this energy is the binding energy to bind the nucleons within the nucleus so that mean this is the reason why the protons or the neutrons are stable within the nucleus due to the binding energy so here uh, i am just showing here uh, you can also use the uh, formula this is the same uh, there is no difference just the binding energy it is the mass of the uh, neutron and the number of neutron multiply the mass of neutron plus number of uh, proton uh, into the mass of proton in the similar way we have uh, calculated over here this is the the mass in case of the helium minus the mass actual mass of the the nuclide which is in the, uh, helium case is 4.0020 unified atomic mass and you uh, will be multiplying with the the velocity of light here i have uh, sh shown you a uh, and the simple conversion unit so there is no need to multiply with the velocity of light you just multiply the 931.5 it will directly convert the mass into the energy so another is this is the binding energy so what is this this is called the average binding energy so the reason is uh, uh, is this 
the average binding energy is the the binding energy per nucleon so we are just going to divide the binding energy with the the mass number and mass number is the nucleons neutron plus proton so so by dividing the uh, binding energy with the nucleons or the mass number it will give you the value of uh, uh, 7.075 in case of the helium nuclide and this is called the average binding energy so this is the binding energy and if you divide the the binding energy with the nucleons or the mass number it will give you the value of the average binding energy so why we have calculated the average binding energy so just look at this table if you just uh, uh, have a look uh, on the uh, binding energy so binding energy from the neutron helium uh, deuterium uh, so on they are increasing continuously increasing and you see the maximum binding energy in the uranium case is 1803.5 and this is surprising so why the, the that mean is the uranium is more stable as compared to the let's suppose uh, helium lithium beryllium or the other so that mean, uh, you already know that this is the radioactive in nature so the binding energy actually is not the uh, the main uh, energy to define the stability of the uh, nucleons it is the average binding energy so if you have a look on the average binding energy average binding energy is the the binding energy per nucleon as we have calculated before so uh, just have a look on the average binding energy these are going to be increased till 8 point uh, this is the for the helium 8 point uh, sorry for the iron 8.79 and then this is further going to decrease so increasing order you can find the increasing order till iron 56 and then there is again the the decreasing order so uh, 8.79 so that mean iron has the uh, more average binding energy per nucleon so this you can easily understand uh, by using uh, the, this graph uh, so this is the uh, uh, the plot of average binding energy or the binding energy per nucleon on the y-axis and on the x-axis this is the mass number so average binding energy is going to increase till iron 56 and then it is going to decrease uh, after the iron 56 that means iron 56 is having the the highest value of the average binding energy so this is also the two concept that means if this is the uh, the stable one nuclide so the lighter one tends to join together to form the heavier nuclide to move towards the iron 56 and this process is called actually the fusion process so there is the other heavier nuclide if they want to go towards the the lighter one of course they will split into the lighter nuclides and this process is called the fission process so due to the fission process or the fusion process before the iron 56 there uh, there is the possibility of the fusion process and after the iron 56 there is a possibility of the fusion process so they are moving nuclides are moving towards the iron 56 so this is the the relationship of the average binding energy with the mass number so i think uh, uh, the lecture is going to be lengthy so i am going to end over here i will explain the rest of the uh, parameters in the next lecture so i will explain the the other one uh, nuclear decays uh, alpha decay negatron positron emission electron capture in the next lecture so thank you for watching this lecture and see you in the next lecture